Hi, so as you know, downstairs we've got a CO2 laser. Now, it's a really cheap Chinese knockoff. I think they call them the K40 type. And it is, in fact, a, an actual laser tube. Now, it's, it's quite good. It does the job, okay? But you do need a little bit of setting up. It is a little bit clunky. It will only run on Windows ME and less. You need a pump, you need water, you need a computer dedicated to it running Windows ME. Software's a little clunky to use, so you need to get used to it, and it will do a job. The maintenance is a bit of a nightmare in that you're actually cleaning it up all the time. Now, I bought this thing, or the, the CO2 laser, probably about five years ago, or something like that. When I bought it, it was uh, around about 150, 200 quid. They've gone in, up in price, they're so now about 400 pounds or so. But of course, in that intervening time, lots of other really interesting things have happened with lasers. Now, diode lasers began their life with sort of milliwatt ranges, and they were used for um, etching wood, you know, kind of like pyrography, burning designs into the surface of wood, that sort of thing. But they have come on leaps and bounds. And I was looking around for something that would be better than the CO2 laser. These days you can get diode lasers at 20, 30, 40 watts, and that's a lot of power. That CO2 laser is advertised as a 30 watt laser, so it occurred to me that a diode laser might actually be able to replace a CO2 laser. So I had a look, had an investigation of the what they say it will do, and they will say it will burn through plastic and do what we want it to do, and so I bought one, and that's the one in here. Now, it actually cost me £145, which I think is a pretty reasonable price. Now, I bought this, and I haven't been sent it for free, so this is not me giving an unboxing of a product I've been given. This is me giving an unboxing of a product I have chosen. So, I chose this based on those ideas. I, it's simpler, no pumps, no running water. It uses a bit more modern software, so we can actually plug it to a better computer. It's obviously smaller and cleaner, which is why we're up in the office, whereas the uh, CO2 printer's downstairs in the workroom, because it's fairly big. And I don't know how it's going to work, but that's what this video is about. The video is about unboxing it and seeing how it works. So let's take the top off this box and see what we've got inside. Okay, so we've got some um, sample bits and pieces to run some tests on. The inevitable hardware instruction manual, written in half Chinese, half English. So that's going to be fun. And it does have a parts list, so that'll be helpful. And then the thing itself is actually packed reasonably well. So there's the box it came in. It's in some of this expanded foam. And the bits and pieces are in there. There's the USB connection cable. This is one of the drive arms with the drive board already connected. So there is a little bit of assembly, clearly, but not actually that much. This looks like the carriage head. We pull that out. So that's going to be the laser carriage head supply cable and it's obviously got the wrong plug on it ah, there we go and there is the uh, adapter plug so obviously that will go in there we can plug the power in this looks like the laser unit itself now i ordered a 20 watt laser i thought that the good thing about these would be if that this burns out then it's very replaceable if they upgrade it then it's also very replaceable i was tempted to get the 40 watt version but this one was shown cutting through three millimeter uh, abs so i thought i would give that a go and we'll see how that works so i ordered the 20 watt version there clearly is the power brick and we've got a couple of side supports we're going to have to be screwing on yep there's the screws for them that looks like the USB with the software. Uh, some thumb wheel connectors. We've got to go somewhere, I guess. And then the actual protection goggles. Now, in the CO2 laser, you've got a little flip-down lid, so the laser is contained in its own little encasement. This one is a desktop device, so the laser is out there in the environment. But this is going to be just like welding. I mean, somebody wrote to me saying how they were afraid of touching the welding rod because it had such high amps. Yeah, on those welding rods for um, commercial, sorry, for home use, they tend to be around about sort of 20 volts or so. 
they can go up to 100 volts but the house wants 20 volts and basically if you grab that rod what's going to happen to you is a big fat zero so people worry about some of the strangest things i figure you wear the glasses you're going to be okay you scared of the laser being out there well this is not the machine for you okay and that's the empty box so let's get that thing assembled so the first bit is to connect these. The board gets attached here on the left hand side with a couple of M5 screws and then this plate came in the box and that gets connected to that side again with a couple of M5 screws. And they're screwed on like that. Now one thing I thought was quite neat actually is that the end of the drive cable is a slot in this end plate, the drive cable uh, sorry, the um, drive belt slots through one, you put the nut in and then you can fold it over and tuck it away to the centre of the support, support bar. I thought it was a, a neat little touch. The next thing they say to do is to connect the laser to the laser back plate. The back plate's been pre-drilled with a lot of different holes in different positions because these lasers change their hole position and the back plate has been pre-drilled to fit a lot of lasers. So you just need to match that up, match it up with the holes that your laser head has and then they take an M3 screw and you put the M3 screws in in the correct place. So when we've done that, the put to one side and this arm gets connected to there. Now a couple of things to notice that the motor drive here is facing to the rear. The control board is on the left but facing on the inside. This leg here is also is on the right but the long part of the leg facing toward you. And then that goes on like that and these four supplied thumb screws go on. So once we've done that, just turn it around and we're going to attach the laser now to the travel arm which is right there and that attaches there like that. Now I should say that the tools are supplied and there aren't actually that many nuts and bolts to put together so it was tremendously easy. Now they recommend, and I can see why, that you attach the laser cable before you attach the cable. And that's because the laser, sorry, before you attach the laser head. That's because the cable feeds through these slots and there's a little locking piece right there that locks it in place. So attach the laser cable to the laser, feed it into there and back out there. And then you can jiggle it around a little bit until you get it to fit. There we go, like that. And that gets fitted on with these small M3 screws and some handily provided thumb wheels. Okay, there it is all completed and together. And to be honest, it's actually quite sturdy for what it is. And I think cute, which is not something you could say for a K40. So it's quite cute. Now, my guess is there'll be a little bit of a problem with it, actually, because we see the um, cutter goes all the way out to this arm and there's a lot of weight there and it's moving, so it's likely to judder a little bit, I would have thought. Now, they do supply little rubber feet, which I've put on, but it would benefit from having more weight in the actual machine. So what I've done is get this bit of tempered glass here and I'll probably glue the rubber feet to the tempered glass to give it a little bit more stability as it cuts but adding something to create stability on it would probably not be a bad idea but on the whole i mean it was 145 pounds it is a vigo tech and i got it from banggood and it arrived pretty quickly actually 10 days is what it took to arrive the assembly was just a breeze i mean it fitted together really nicely and it does create quite a solid budget cutter because we don't know how it performs yet so we're going to have to do something on it but the software to drive it comes on a little stick here uh, and I'm going to load that software up onto my computer. Okay, actually, that's mildly awesome. Uh, loading the software was really easy. I was wrong, it wasn't on the stick. Actually, I had to go to the Vigo uh, website, but it was really easy to find. You just clicked on the website and it gave you the options. You need to make sure that the one that you're getting is Vigo works. I got the wrong one first and it didn't work and I thought I'd done something wrong, but then I checked and went back and got Vigo Works 3, and that just worked a treat. Now, it doesn't give you much in the way of help, uh, and the front end is extraordinarily simple, so you do have to play with the software a little bit, because when you click on some of these options, then the settings that you can change, actually, um, grey out or go blue, when the blue you can change them. So if you do something like outline, which is what I'm on at the moment, 
then it can add, you can change the speed and the laser setting the strength. Obviously, we're going to need that if we're cutting through acrylic. But I put a piece of paper down and I did a, the car design that they had, and it did the car design beautifully. You can reset where the center is, so you know where the center is. I know to have got a bit of burning there on the glass, so I'm probably going to have to do something else with that, like maybe put something that won't burn on it. But anyway, the next thing to do with this is obviously cut something out with it, and that'll be in the next video. But basically, it actually looks like an awesome piece of kit for 145 quid. So now let's see if it'll cut through some 3mm acrylic, in which case it's going to be stunningly useful. I did take a bit of a chance buying it, but I think it's uh, looking quite promising. So it's the Vigotech L3, and I got it from Banggood, and it cost me £145, and it is rather neat. So I thought I would share it with you, because I know a few people are interested in laser cutters, and this one being a diode laser without all of the hassle of cooling a tube, I thought was very attractive. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, please do feel free to ask, and thank you very much for watching.